In this video, we are going to learn about how to build multi-threaded apps with Dreamlit. Well, you may be wondering why uh, is this a big deal? First of all, multi-threading allows you to run parallel processes, such as like a chat process, question answering process, and a summarization process concurrently at the same time. And if you actually do some search on the Streamlit support multi-threaded apps, that it doesn't inherently support multi-threaded apps. And people have been posting all over the internet about this and no luck, and people propose different solutions, and Streamlit doesn't currently tackle multi-threading. But I think I found a way around it uh, somewhat, and it works, so that's what we're going to talk about. Let's first see how this works. Oh, and we'll also talk about how to actually debug uh, Streamlit apps with a launch.json file, which is really handy. Let's first run our app by typing Streamlit run and the name of our file. And when we run this, we should get a Streamlit web UI open. It's uh, my app is blue because I changed the uh, settings to actually make it blue. Anyway, you can actually do that. And I talk about it in my Streamlit course. So let's bring the IDE and the Streamlit interface side by side. What happened is that we actually printed the session state. We're also going to talk about that. We are initializing some objects into the session state. But if I say hi there, you know, just as an example, we're going to see that we get a response from GPT. Sometimes you have to try it again. Here we go. Hello, how can I assist you? So we got the response and then we got a summarization happening and summary has been written to summary.txt file. I can ask, tell me about Streamlit. And here we go. Once we get the response, it will be now being summarized, but I can actually send another one. So the summary will be happening in, in concurrently. And now we're getting another summary and summary is written to a file. So we are able to achieve this concurrency using threading using a combination of session states. And there are some uh, few quirks to it, which we will talk about. So uh, let's begin. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. And some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files, so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well. Well, let's start with a simple case, take it step by step, and we'll also talk about launch.json. So we are importing Streamlit and we are using OpenAI Unified just to simplify our lives. We are using its methods. I've talked about this in depth in my OpenAI Unified video. You can find it by searching for it at my website, echohive.live. Anyway, we're just going to use that to simplify the process. We are writing the session state immediately. So that is actually what we see when we first uh, print the begin state. Initially, that is going to be empty. And then we just write GPT-4 Turbo Chat. And then we initialize the GP if GPT chat is not in session state. We're going to initialize it. ST.SessionState.GPT is going to be equal to the object GPT calls using model GPT 3.5 turbo and streaming set to true. Session state is, um, is an ability to be able to persist your variables or objects uh, within the same script because every time you make take an action on a streamlet interface, this entire script runs all over again and everything that you assign will be re reinitialized. But if you assigned it to a session state, then it won't. That's why we're printing the session state in the beginning. And then we are checking if GPT chat is in session state. If not, we are initializing it. And then we are printing it again. And then we're just taking in user input. And then if the ST.button button send is clicked, then we are going to call ST.session state GPT. And it's we're going to call the chat method. This one actually is right here. It's from the OpenAI Unify class with the user input. And then we're going to use ST.write stream element to write the response because this response is going to be a generator object because OpenAI Unified get response generator yields the text chunks from the API call. And then uh, we are going to actually combine them into input and response. Actually, we don't need to do that in this case. So we can run this app by typing streamlit run one apply, or we can actually run it with our debugger and I can actually put breakpoints here. Debugger you can initialize by pressing F5 or by using the run and debug. Now, because we have created in the .vs code folder a launch.json file, when we run the debugger, it'll automatically use this configuration. And all this does is uses the debugger to run the command 
streamlit and then run and then file name. So it's actually doing uh, what we would have done in terminal anyway. So let's keep this file. Uh, all these code files will be available at my Patreon at uh, uh, my streamlit course. I will put a link in the description where you can find my courses at Echo High Courses Collection in my Patreon. I have the 1000X Dev Masterclass. I also have the Streamlit course with videos. This is going to be the fourth video. You can't see it here, but I also cover the basics of Streamlit. And I also have a built fast with fast API course using GPT examples so that we can actually learn it in relevance to what's happening in technology today. Anyway, so these files will be available in my course. Link will be in the description. Uh, and if you do choose to become a patron, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. So let's do this. I just put a breakpoint here and I'm going to press F5 and the debugger will automatically start using the launch.json, which we have placed under .vs code. And our uh, script is initializing. Let's move this to the side so we can better see. Here we go. We have actually stopped right here at the, where we have the breakpoint. And when we, we, when we do the step over right here, we move on to the next line. We have printed the session state, which is currently empty. We're going to do line by line processing. We have done GPT-4 Turbo Chat. And then now we are going to uh, initialize the session state uh, right here. We have printed it. And we, session state is initialized. And uh, we have also printed the GPT object now, which is in the session state as a GPT key being this object. And then now we can take in user input. And then we can just say hi and then press enter. And you see, when we press enter, the script runs from all over again. And we can just press continue to run the script until another breakpoint. And here we can see that we are getting responses from GPT 3.5 Turbo. Hello, how can I assist you today? So this is it in a nutshell, right? This is a very simple implementation. So now, but we are we want to use this in a multi-threaded way. So let's uh, start with that. So we are uh, importing threading and queue. So let me explain it in this one. Let's say we have a main.py file and we have some lines of code in here. And if we start a threaded, if we start a new thread somewhere within this line, then this will actually initialize a separate thread, which is going to be, let's say, a function. And this is going to run completely independently from our file. And it's going to run concurrent to it, meaning the rest of the lines of code will continue executing while this is also executing, maybe within a while loop. And how we communicate between our main script and a threaded script is using a queue system. So, for example, what happens here is that uh, down the line somewhere over here, maybe we make a call to GPT and get a response. So then we put this response object to a queue. And once it's in this queue, within a uh, while loop, for example, maybe this function in this thread is continually checking if there's something in this queue. If there is, it takes it in and it does something with it. You can also, after the fact, process and whatever comes out of it, actually put it into another queue too, which we are doing. We're going to talk about that. Although we are not doing anything with the, whatever is placed in the secondary queue, instead we are actually saving this to a file called summary.txt, as we have seen. But we are adding it to a secondary queue, meaning there is no real limitation. You can actually have multiple uh, queues and you can have multiple threads uh, communicating with each other using a queue system. So then let's see how we've done this. We again are writing the session state in the beginning of our script, which is going to be empty at this point. And we check for GPT chat in session state. If not, we initialize it just like we've done. Okay. And then we check for, we want to initialize two GPT instances, one for the regular question answering and one for summarization. And I named it GPT summary. If, not, if that's not in the session state, we initialize another GPT calls. We name it GPT summary. Okay. It's pretty much the same parameters. And then we initialize a queue. If we say chat queue, if chat queue not in st.session state, then st.session state.chat queue is going to equal queue.queue, which we are importing up here. And summary queue, if it's not in session state, we initialize it. So this is going to initialize our objects. And that's why we're going to be able to see it here in printed streamlet once we initialize it. In the beginning, the begin will be empty, of course. And not, a, not in the consecutive runs of it, because then the session state will have been filled. And then we define a function. Usually you pass a function to a thread. So we are importing thread and we are defining a function called summarize and we're going to pass this function. Now the important thing here is we're going to talk about this function, which is going to work within a while loop and continually check if chat queue is not empty and then uh, take that uh, question answer pair and then summarize it and then write it to file and add it to summary queue, right? Just as we've talked about here. So this is our chat queue right here. So we're going to get a response from GPT, put it right here. 
and then this while loop is going to pick it up, bring it here, summarize it with another chat GPT. And once it's done, it's going to put it into a queue and also save it to a file. Okay, that's what's going to happen. But the important part is that since we're going to run this in a thread and we once we initialize our thread, like with threading that thread, you have to pass the function along with its arts arguments. The thing is that you the important part here is that you couldn't, you don't have to pass this summary GPT object. You could have, you might be thinking maybe I'll just instantiate it from the session state, meaning ST.session state summary GPT. But if you do that, you're going to run into errors, and that's what many other people have. But instead, you want to pass the object into the function which you are going to pass to the thread itself. Okay, that's the important part. And here, all we're doing is while through every two seconds, we are checking if there's anything in the chat queue. If there is, we get it. Okay. And then we pass it to the summary GPT object, which we are going to take from the session state, but we are passing it as an argument to this function. And then we're just going to get it summarized. It's going to be a generator object. We just join it and then write it to file and edit to queue. There's an exception. We print the error message. So, and then we also initialize the thread in a session state as well. We check if my thread, not in st.session state, st.session state, my thread is threading that thread. Target is this function, which we talked about, and its arguments is st.session state chat queue. And, and the summary queue and the st.session state GPT summary. This is the object I was talking about that we are passing. This is the summary GPT object. And we call it Damien through so that when the script stops, all the thread stops as well. And then we start this thread. And then we write GPT to Turbo Chat, and pretty much everything remains the same. We print the state of the session state. After the, the fact, after the stuff has been initialized, we take in user input, we get a response, we write it to the Streamlit interface, get that response. Uh, and then we combine the input and the response in a dictionary, and we put it into the chat queue. And then we just print the uh, uh, length of the queue on the terminal. So we can, again, run this with, for example, F5. Since I don't have any breakpoints, it should run just normally. But at any point in time, while this is running, I can put a breakpoint here as well. So now when I do this, let's put this side by side. We're going to see that we are... Uh, getting a response, and now we're getting it summarized, and now we are writing it summary.txt file. So if this was a continuous chat, this summarization process should happen every two seconds. So this is it. This is a simple implementation, but for, it's really you can modify it for any type of use case. I hope this you found this helpful. Like I said, this will be available at my Streamlit course. I hope you find the course beneficial for you as well. Let me know in the comments, and thank you for watching. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. As some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects. As a patron, you will have access to all the code files, so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses, and my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also, the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well.